This production has been brought to you by Brass Horse Bar and Grill, Smokers Hideaway, Warriors Pilot, Big Boys Gas and Tobacco, the Aquazusna Convenience Store Association, Tarbell Management Group, and Mohawk Networks LLC. <laughs> Like we all have a part in this movement to reclaim the waters, to reclaim the land, uh, to take care of the earth. We all made a promise that we were going to protect these sacred lands. We've fallen in love with these lands. There was non-violent direct action, which means that people um, willingly got arrested, placed themselves in front of um, equipment or on roads, knowing that they were going to get arrested so in the hopes that it would stop or halt the construction of the pipeline. A lot of tribal people were frustrated that there was no respect given to that because who in their right mind would ever degrade or deface a cemetery? Who would ever willingly go out there and do that? And the people got really upset. The world is watching as water protectors, not protesters, are standing together against the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline. The pipeline will transport 4,700 barrels of crude oil per day. When the Dakota Access Pipeline workers brought equipment to Standing Rock in April 2016, the Sioux tribe set up a camp called Sacred Stone to halt the construction. Since the camp was established, the energy transfer construction increased the activity on site by bringing more equipment. The story gained momentum and the news spread primarily on social media using the hashtag NoDAPL or Water is Life. Despite the efforts to stop construction, they continued to deliberately dig through a sacred burial ground. This upset water protectors who then went out to defend the land. And went out there to stop it, um, not with the intention of hurting or killing. I was a witness to that. I didn't see any knives, I didn't see any hatchets, I didn't see any weapons of any kind. And so it was a complete surprise when they got there with the dogs. I was out the front line right there. Um, I was maced, you know, and that night after I recovered from the mace, I was told to come here and establish this camp. We started growing and, and building and learning and bonding and I made promise to women and to men whose ancestors are buried over there to protect these lands and I wasn't ready to leave. After Washington DC Circuit Court judge denied the preliminary injunction, the Standing Rock tribe filed an appeal hoping to further stop the construction. On September 16, 2016, the Obama administration put a temporary halt to construction, but work on the Dakota Access Pipeline continued, leading to 27 people being arrested in the attempt to stop the machinery. Our elders, our, our women, they tell every day in camp, we, we are a peaceful people, we pray, that's always been our tenant, and um, we don't, we're not here to cause to cause violence. We're not here to to go to war. Uh, it's a beautiful thing coming here it brought tears to my eyes to come to this camp and to realize that now as as indigenous peoples we're empowered to, you know, stand up against the those, you know, for me it feels like broken-hearted people who forgot their connection to Mother Earth, uh, who forgotten how to know how to love water, how to pray for water, how to sing, you know, seed songs and all these things. And so they, they do horrible things to the earth and to the waters without any foresight for, you know, the next generations. And so, you know, this is a powerful statement uh, to the whole world. The whole world is watching and watching indigenous people say, you know, enough. 
You know, we've had enough of this. The fight is for the land and clean water for the future generations, which is why water protectors are planning to persevere through the winter months. You know, we have cold nights and a long winter ahead of us, and we're dedicated to the end. From Standing Rock, North Dakota, I'm Kevin Lazor, ATV Galiwanagale.